Okay, welcome back. The Mang plays the best games of all time. Last time we looked at uh, one of the most popular games ever. Very well-known classic. Pac-Man. Or Puck-Man. Or Fuck-Man. Uh... This time, we're looking at Centipede, which uh, is not uh, is not as popular as Pac-Man. I think we can all agree on that. For one, I don't think I had ever played it, like, before a few weeks ago. Uh, I had always thought, you know, when I when I heard, when I saw, like, the game Centipede on this list, without, like, looking into it at all, I thought it was Snake. Like the snake game or whatever that used to be on like Nokia phones and stuff where you'd um you'd move the snake around and you'd have to pick up the little dots or whatever to get bigger until you eventually ran into yourself. I think that game is just called Snake, I'm not sure. Uh that's what I thought Centipede was. I didn't know <laughs> even what this game was. So that tells you quite a bit. Cause you know, Pong everyone knows, Space Invaders everyone knows, Pac-Man everyone knows. But yeah, Centipede I was surprised to even see it on the list because it was like, Snake? That seems... I don't know. I guess it's okay. <laughs> uh, but no, Centipede. So, as you can see, we have some demo footage here. This is the Atari 7800 version that came out in 1984. The original um, arcade 1981. So this is a few years later. But overall, I mean, we're playing a pretty original version. <sighs> um... And the goal is uh, you're at the bottom of the screen. I think you can move a little bit. I'm not exactly sure how much. Uh, you're at the bottom of the screen. You're firing upwards. Uh, there's all sorts of little obstacles, much like Space Invaders has like those fixed obstacles you can shoot through. Uh, and your goal is to destroy the centipede as it slowly makes its way down. So in a lot of ways, uh, it is reminiscent of something like Space Invaders. Uh, and you can see as you destroy the centipede there, like it breaks apart, and then you've got more and more little parts to deal with, and it's fairly fast. I think you can move around freely. Because uh, you also got, like, spiders that are trying to kill you or something. Um, and it's, it's a fixed screen thing, you know, the layout. The, you know, that that's it. That's... that's the game is you it's you the centipede the mushrooms and like a spider um or you know there's some other little creatures but nothing ever really changes with that the screen never moves or or nothing now the interesting thing that i saw just glancing at the wikipedia page is that this was one of the first arcade games with a significant female player base and that's pretty interesting what is it about this game that drew females to it um the supervisor for the game said okay so it was developed by a woman which i mean that's pretty incredible for the time she was apparently one of the few female game programmers in the industry. And the supervisor for the game stated that the game was intended to attract women players. He believed that its design was not biased by sex, unlike a fighting or sports game. <sighs> okay. That's great. But, I mean, if you look at the other, you know, super popular best arcade games of the early days, you know, you look at Space Invaders, you look at Pac-Man, you look at um, Astro, you know, none of those games are about fighting or sports. 
<laughs> and and basically what you have here is space invaders. So I you know I don't really understand why specifically females were drawn to this, unless it was just like word of mouth thing about having a female developer or something like yeah I don't I have no idea. Uh, it could be as as he mentions that um it has very sort of bright pastel colors to it which is a factor but i don't know if that would specifically draw in i don't know i mean i really have no idea but it, it was a very interesting thing that, that this is one of the first games that women were drawn to um so yeah i guess there isn't much else to say other than just getting into it um i really i the i played this game for the first time a few weeks ago when I went to this like retro con uh, and they had a bunch of consoles set up. Uh, this is one of the games that was being, you know, that was available. I think it was actually on like a, uh, one of those new Atari retro consoles that just have like a hundred games on it or whatever. Um, the controllers were so shit. It was just like, and I had never held like an original Atari controller, but you know, I held this like, remake thing and it was just so stiff and horrible it was really difficult to play um so i was not overly impressed here we're just going to be playing with the uh, keyboard so it's obviously a lot easier all right so we got some hefty sound effects here and uh it's it's got an intensity shit it's got an intensity to it that space invaders did not have these these rounds go by much faster than space invader rounds because that centipede just constantly barreling down There seems to definitely be, like, some lag with this version, this site or whatever, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, yeah, the colors, I, I will say, the colors are very unique, looking at a lot of the other games that we've played. Um... I think the only one that's really comparable is, is Pac-Man. But this has, you know, even more wild colors going on. Every every round, it colors shift. All the colors shift uh, for every object, every enemy. Ooh, nice. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's, um... Oh, Scorpion. Fuck, fuck! That's it. That's Centipede. Uh, there are different difficulty levels, which I don't know if they were... That probably wasn't present on the original Cade. But... This version at least has two players and like multiple difficulty levels for every variant. Pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, overall it's it's iterative, you know. It it certainly feels a lot like Space Invaders. And there were just boatloads of games like this that did the same thing of you're at the bottom of the screen, there's shit in front of you, often, you know, coming down towards you, and you've got to move left and right to blow it up. Um... Psh, 
Okay. Uh, and that's fine. I mean, taking a, a, an existing concept and and working off of it to do something new and interesting is, is perfectly fine. Has been for decades. But again, if we point back to why I said Space Invaders was one of the best, and why a bunch of these early games are the best, is simplicity. Again, we lose simplicity when you up sort of the intensity. Which is why I didn't think Asteroids was one of the best. So it's hard to say, because it's like, anybody could play Centipede. Because control-wise, it's the exact same as Space Invaders. I mean, you can do these sort of vertical thing, where you move up and down, but it's not required to just shoot things. You really just move... Fuck. <laughs> Uh, hold on. Let's let's play on. Uh, so two player alternating dual player competition team play, but we want to do novice one player. There you go. It's more my speed. Um, all you really need to play is left, right, and shoot. Just like Space Invaders. So anyone that could play Space Invaders, which I said was basically anyone, um, could play Centipede. But, you're going to have a far more difficult time, time with it. And uh, we're going to go through a period on this list where we really have some, some frank discussions about difficulty. Uh, you know, the, the, ar the arcade era, and, uh, of course, the NES era, things like that. Um, games were not designed to be easy. Games were designed to be easy for, like, 30 seconds, or a minute, maybe, to hook you in. Uh, but then the whole design philosoph philosophy is about, you know, getting progressively harder and harder and harder and harder, because you can't... You know, you're not coming up with new gameplay mechanics part way through. That, that sort of concept doesn't happen for a while in the video game world. Which is something we're well accustomed to nowadays. But, you know, back then, as you've seen, once you've played a game for 30 seconds, you know, there's really no new surprises. Nothing is going to suddenly happen or suddenly change as far as the core gameplay. Um... So progression just comes from making everything more difficult. And this carried over into the NES era. And there are a lot of reasons for that. But you'll have games in the NES era that are like three stages, but they're just fucking balls hard. Because, you know, video games were just like cranked out. And nowadays we expect games to you know, we expect these epic gameplay experiences that last 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 hours. 
and constantly, you know, introduce new gameplay mechanics and have new areas and new level, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. You know, we kind of come to expect that. Where, you know, arcade era stuff, Atari stuff, it was basically just you had, you know, a game. You were well familiar with that game and everything it did. And you just played it over and over to get better or get a higher score. And that was it. That was the expectation. And, I mean, there were Nintendo games that broke that kind of paradigm. Um, principally from Nintendo. But yeah, I mean, many, many games in the early days were just purposefully designed to be difficult in order to just keep you playing and to not, you know, deal to deal with the limitations of, of hardware and software and things. It's just, what can we do to keep people, you know, engaged and keep people playing more and more and more? Just make it difficult. It'll take them a while to master it. Simple. Um, so yeah, Centipede. It's fine. I mean, it's perfectly fine. Um, yeah, I mean, the colors and all that, that, that is a nice change to see during this time period of, uh, all these variations and bright pastel color. You know, I like all that. Gameplay. It's adequate. I mean, <sighs> again, and I've said this multiple times now that we're giving points <laughs> to some of these early games uh, and putting them on this list because of their simplicity, because they do something that nobody else does better. Um, that anybody can play it, anybody can get onto it and just enjoy it. Um, when you start iterating off of those simplistic games to add to them, it gets a lot trickier. That argument, you know, loses weight. You have uh, games that are, that are more intense and more difficult and require, you know, m more demand from the player. So I don't know. Um, I would probably say there are games that do what Centipede does better, because you start, <laughs> once you get into the whole top-down shooter genre, and you look at the entire genre of top-down shooters, of your ship at the bottom, other shit at the top coming towards you, I mean, that is a massive genre, and we're going to be looking at a whole bunch more uh, games down the line uh, in this genre. Obviously, far more developed and, you know, further along with technology and stuff, and you're actually moving up the screen or, you know, it makes it look like that or whatever. And there's all sorts of different ships and different power-ups. And, and then, you know, you look at um, uh, sort of side-scrolling shooters that go left to right, like, um, I can't even think of one right now, Life Force or, you know, th things like that. It's like... This is all sort of the same genre. Uh, it's basically the same thing. I can't really say Centipede is sort of, sort of in the middle between Space Invaders and these later shooters does anything that particularly well. So, you know. The final test, though, of course, as is tradition, is to look at a later Centipede game and uh, see how that compares. Fortunately, like... A month and a half ago, uh, I you know I have Epic Game Store installed, and they occasionally give out free games that give a pop up. And one day they had a pop up for Centipede Recharged, free, and I was like, "Yep, <laughs> I will take that because I know we're going to be doing Centipede." Uh, so yeah, we're going to be trying this out.
It is, uh, it's flashy, certainly flashy. Let me just... There we go. There we go. Yeah. This sort of like neo-retro look where it's, it's all neon and designed to remind you of the 80s, 80s goodness. There it is. All right, let's do arcade single player. Um. Oh, W A S D. I was not used to that. Okay. Oh man, it is fast. You move fast, and you shoot slow. I expected shooting slow because then you get upgrades. I assume. But I didn't expect you to move so fast. I thought that would be an upgrade as well. Okay, so there we got uh, a spider. We got burst shot. That's a big improvement. Although it lessens your range quite a bit. Now we got rapid fire. So this is basically... I think we can classify all these as like boomer bait. I don't think these games are really designed with young people in mind. But I don't know, because it's like... Like, my dad grew up on asteroids. He, he fucking loved asteroids, you know? And uh, he was an asteroids king in his day, back in 1980 or whatever. But, you know, he's not playing Asteroids nowadays, and he's certainly not going to pick up, like, Asteroids Reloaded or whatever the hell, you know, that is out there. I don't think he has any interest in anything Asteroids, because he's moved on, and he plays, like, you know, Civilization now. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe there are still people out there, but it's a tricky thing, because it's like... If they still have interest in playing Asteroids or Missile Command or something, they're probably going to type in Missile Command and play it in, like, their web browser on the AARP website, you know? <laughs> like, that that's more likely. Um, having an old person that's interested in playing a new version of their old favorites and has, like... Epic Game Store Steam installed. And would rather play a remake or, you know, a new version rather than the original for nostalgia's sake. I don't know. I, I don't really imagine any of these things sell that well. So it's really surprising they even get made. Um, but here, uh, this, this validates my Pac-Man argument when we did Pac-Man and I did Pac-Man 256 and I said it was not the same core experience. This is the same fucking core experience as Centipede. You cannot deny that. We're at the bottom of the screen. It's fixed. There's a centipede coming down from the top. We have to shoot it and there's mushrooms in the way. I mean, that is the core experience of Centipede and it is preserved. Graphics are, you know, a little different. There's power-ups and little additions and stuff, but the core experience is the same. Pac-Man 256 was not. And, you know, overall, I would say, for me, personally, this is more fun than Centipede by itself. It's also easier, I would say, but... Of course it is, you know? Oh, shit. Not that easy, though. It's still Centipede. Um, so, yeah, again, the fact that this does what Centipede does better than Centipede. How can it be? How could it be the best game of all time? And, 
and again, much like Missile Command, I think people are just gonna pay some lip service. They're like, oh yeah, Centipede, that was a big popular game. We gotta put that on there to give credence to our list. Can't just put, uh, can't just put all those the Souls games on the list. We gotta, we gotta put Centipede on there. And again, you know, if you talked about best games of 1980 or something like that, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, this isn't, uh, this isn't bad. I mean, it's not really... Oh. It's not really my kind of game or anything. It's going to be a little while till we get to turn-based games, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Well, there you have it. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and say Centipede, not one of the best games of all time. Not bad, just not quite that prestigious. But yeah, we've got a lot of shooter games coming up. Defender next, Galaga from the same year as this. Um, Robotron 2084's kind of a shooter game. Um... R type later on. I thought there was some other ones. Well, I guess then you get into stuff like Contra and I think Contra and Contra 3 are both on this list. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I thought. Hold on, was I wrong that that game's on this list? No, it is on this list. Uh, uh, Ikaruga. That one I'm very fearful of. Because <laughs> now, then you start getting into, you know, bullet hell kind of stuff. But anyways, yeah. So, Centipede... I'm going to have to give a thumbs down, but plenty more games, plenty more games to go. For now, my name is Mang. This has been Mang Plays Best Games of All Time with Centipede. I'll see you fine folks next time.